Russia prepares for China's invasion. Military rehearses use of nuclear weapons. The Russian armed forces have reportedly rehearsed the early stage use of tactical nuclear weapons in a conflict scenario with a major global power, according to leaked information from Russian military files outlining preparations for potential Chinese aggression. A threshold for the implementation of tactical nuclear weapons appears lower than ever publicly acknowledged by Russia. The cache comprises 29 classified Russian military files spanning from 2008 to 2014. Criteria for potential nuclear responses range from an adversary's invasion of Russian territory to more specific triggers such as the destruction of 20% of Russian strategic submarines armed with ballistic missiles. Despite the documents dating back a decade or more, experts assert their relevance to contemporary Russian military doctrine. Training materials depict scenarios wherein the Russian Eastern Military District simulated various incursions by China. Such exercises offer rare insights into Russia's view of its nuclear arsenal as a cornerstone of defense policy and its readiness to deliver a first nuclear strike under certain combat conditions. One exercise outlining a hypothetical attack by China notes that Russia dubbed the Northern Federation for the purpose of the war game, could respond with a tactical nuclear strike in order to stop the South from advancing with a second wave of invading forces. The order has been given by the Commander-in-Chief to use nuclear weapons in the event the enemy deploys second echelon units and the South threatens to attack further in the direction of the main strike, the document says. In a separate training presentation for naval officers unrelated to China, broader criteria for a potential nuclear strike are outlined, including repelling an adversary's landing on Russian territory, targeting units responsible for guarding border areas, or countering an imminent enemy attack with conventional arms. The threshold is defined as a combination of factors where losses incurred by Russian forces would irrevocably lead to their failure to stop major enemy aggression, a scenario deemed critical situation for the state of security of Russia. Russia is recruiting residents of Sierra Leone, Cuba and Nepal for war in Ukraine. The Russian Federation continues to recruit foreigners for the war in Ukraine because it is cheaper and more advantageous than mobilizing Russians. This includes Nepalese and Cubans, according to a statement from Andriy Yusov, a representative of the Defense Intelligence of Ukraine. According to him, there is information that the Russian Federation is recruiting residents of Sierra Leone, Cuba and Nepal. These are countries where citizens have low incomes, so Russia offers men there easy and quick earnings without explaining where they will be spent. It is important that most governments of the countries where the work of Russian recruiters networks is recorded publicly condemn such activities, even diplomatically issue statements. But in countries with low incomes, the 1.5 to 2,000 that the aggressor offers, along with the promise that it will not involve participation in combat operations but some kind of security, may seem attractive to some people, Yusov says. As reported earlier, Russian troops were experiencing a shortage of military personnel to fill combat losses, so they were trying to enlist foreign volunteers for service. In particular, the terrorist state has been recruiting citizens of Cuba for the war in Ukraine. The latter were promised high wages, bonuses and vacations. Also at the beginning of January, Nepal stopped issuing permits to its citizens to work in Russia and Ukraine. At least 10 Nepalese soldiers were killed while serving in the Russian army. Ukrainian drones hit over 14,000 Russian targets in six months. Over the past six months, Ukrainian attack UAVs have hit over 14,000 enemy targets, including Russian equipment, electronic warfare, air defense, and fortifications. Ukraine's Prime Minister Denis Shmihal said this at a government meeting. In just six months, strike drones have hit more than 14,000 targets. Russian equipment, air defense, electronic warfare and fortifications. He said, according to the Prime Minister, Ukraine has revolutionized the development of drones. We adopted 20 laws and bylaws, and thanks to this, we scaled up production 100 times. Bureaucracy has been removed, and there is real competition among about 200 private companies in the UAV industry. $1 billion is provided in this year's state budget for the purchase of drones. And this is not the limit, he summarized.
Schmihal also emphasized that the creation of the unmanned systems forces as a separate type of troops will maximize the potential of drones and added that the course of the war is changing the latest developments. Maritime drones paralyzed the enemy fleet in the Black Sea and guaranteed the security of the water logistics corridor, he said. On February the 11th, the head of the Ministry of Digital Transformation, Mykhailo Fedorov, said that Ukraine had caught up with Russia in terms of the number of long-range kamikaze drones produced.